This video is designed to introduce the concept of meiosis. It's um, actually in your textbook, it's taught in a separate chapter from mitosis. It's actually in the chapter on DNA because it has to do with cells that are used for reproduction. But since much of the process is repeated, I think it makes sense to learn these two things together. So we'll take a look at this diagram. It's very similar to the one that we were using for mitosis before. It has the same little flaws that we were discussing earlier. So the idea that really, you know, in interphase, you shouldn't be able to see the, uh, the DNA or the chromosomes in these early stages. So we'll go for the same thing uh, for these at the end. You know, that's all remember, referred to as the chromatin, and you can't actually see it. Um, like when you're looking at the cell, it's, it's the DNA, but it's sort of like uncondensed DNA. But if we're looking at this diagram, I run through the same general steps. There's still interphase where the cell's preparing to divide. There's still prophase, but now if we're looking at prophase over here, they call it prophase 1 because it's a little bit different than what we were dealing with before. I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Um, the key reason that this prophase stage is different is this thing right here. Up there it says crossing over. If you look carefully at the chromosomes, you can see that some of the edges of the sister chromatids are overlapping each other. What's happening here is some of the DNA is being passed back and forth between these two chromosomes. So we'll just pretend that the purple ones are the chromosomes from dad and that the orange ones are the chromosomes from mom. What this does is it mixes up the DNA so when you're passing on genes to the next generation, you don't pass on either just the DNA from your parents or just the D or I'm sorry, just the DNA from your father or just the DNA from your mother. It's a mixture of the two. So this crossing over step is very important. This increases variation in the offspring, which is good for things genetically. Like we'll get to this when we're talking about evolution. But um, evolutionarily, that's a very, very good thing to have a diverse population. So for following along here, the next one, um, metaphase 1, things look kind of similar to how they were looking before. Chromosomes are lining up in the middle, but instead of just lining up straight across the front of the cell, they line up in these groups of two. This group has a special name. This is referred to as a tetrad. So that's a new term for us. It's basically a cluster of two sets of chromosomes. Uh, you might also see this referred to as a homologous pair of chromosomes. Uh, then down in anaphase, you can see things aren't really being pulled apart in the same way that they were during mitosis. It's just pulling apart that tetra, that group of two uh, homologous pairs of chromosomes. So they're getting pulled to either end of the cell, getting pulled toward the poles, just like they were before. And uh, just like last time in telophase, we get like the nucleus reforming, and then there's just two um, cells that are forming basically on either side of our main cell. Eventually, during cytokinesis, those cells split. So a cytokinesis isn't really very well represented in this diagram, but that would be the phase in between telophase 1 over here and then prophase 2. Um, the reason it's called prophase 2 over here is because the cell goes directly into this stage. If you notice, it does not go back into interphase again. That's one of the things that are unique about meiosis compared to mitosis. It goes right from telophase to cytokinesis directly into division again. What this is going to do is eventually going to end up giving us cells that have half the original amount of DNA, which I will talk a little bit more about at the end. But um, the nice thing about this process, the, all the ones that say 1 with them, prophase 1, metaphase 1, those are all different than they were last time in mitosis. Because here we have crossing over, you know, here we have the tetrads. Everything that says 2 is basically exactly the same as it was before in mitosis. So we're looking at prophase 2 over here. Uh, you can see that most um, everything about this one is the same as before. The one thing that we're going to add here, remember the, the nucleus is kind of starting to come apart. So we'll represent that on there. The nucleus is sort of a dashed line. But everything else is exactly as it was during mitosis. Um, during metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up right in the middle of the cell, just like we're used to seeing them. For anaphase 2, the chromosomes pull apart, so they're no longer sister chromatids. They're pulled in either direction. And uh, you can sort of see here how like, this is a mixture of both like the orange and the purple chromosomes. It's got the little bands from the, uh, the previous DNA in there. Uh, once we get to telophase 2, same setup as before, but now I want you to look at something very carefully. If we take a look at our original cell, that original cell had four chromosomes in it, so it's got four pairs of sister chromatids, which overall are four different chromosomes. Now, 
if we're looking at our cells in telophase, they're only going to have two chromosomes in each nucleus. This is a big deal because when it comes to reproduction, you're only passing on half of your DNA to your offspring. So everybody who's watching this video got half their DNA from mom and half their DNA from dad. You get you know, 23 chromosomes from each parent. This is the process that your body has to go through in order to produce those cells. Now these are specialized cells. This doesn't happen for just anything in your body. So if we shrink this down a little bit so we can look at the end, um, at the end of this process, now we end up with, with four total cells because we've actually gone through the process of division twice. We get two cells from each division, so we ended up with two here. You know, those two divide again. You end up with four total cells at the end. These cells are used to make special things in your body that are referred to as zygotes. Uh, there's two kinds of cells that would be zygotes. Uh, one are sperm cells if we're dealing with males and then egg cells if we're dealing with females. So these are only using um, the, the cells that are for reproduction. There's no other purpose for the cells that are going through the process of meiosis. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out, and I'm glad that it shows up right on the diagram, this is not a cycle, which is one thing that sets it apart somewhat from the process we were talking about with mitosis. So as we usually do at the end, I'll just kind of recap some of the major things that we were talking about as we were working our way through that one. Uh, so the first thing, of course, that we have to use is that uh, this process is used to make cells for reproduction. Another thing to mention is that cell division happens twice. Two times. Uh, another important one for you to notice from what we talked about is you end up with half of the original chromosomes. So uh, for humans it'd be 23. Another thing is that whole stage of crossing over. Crossing over is important because this adds more variation into the offspring which is big. This is why you might look similar to your siblings if you have any, but you don't look exactly the same because you get a variation of the traits from both your parents. Another important point is that we end up with four cells at the end of this process. And then finally, uh, that this is not a cycle. So if you remember before with mitosis, it goes uh, from that step of cytokinesis at the end usually right back into interphase if it's a cell that's going to keep dividing. Some cells go into something called G0 uh, if they're no longer dividing, but that's not common. Uh, usually, if it's a cell that's going to keep dividing in your body, it goes right back uh, into G1 phase and starts growing in order to divide again. Now, this just gives you a very basic introduction to uh, the process of meiosis. We'll take some time in a later video comparing it to mitosis to point out some similarities and some differences. But uh, definitely make use of the diagram that we talked about earlier. I think that the diagram is very helpful when it comes to you know, explaining the different steps here. And we'll certainly be back uh, with that one in future videos. So as always, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in class.